Now let us see some theory parts. So here we are having a block A, B, C, D and it is subjected to the tangential force of P. And because of this particular application of the force P on the surface, that is this particular surface, D will get displaced to D dash, C will get displaced to C dash. The angle that is made with the vertical is phi. And this particular phi over here also it will be phi. And this linear displacement is X. So if you consider the right angle triangle, that is A, D and D dash, then you'll get tan phi is equal to opposite side, that is D, D dash, divided by adjacent side, that is L. So it is X upon L. Now for smaller values, tan phi is equal to phi, that is equal to X upon L. And this phi is known as the angular deformation or shear strength. Now let us see the meaning of modulus of elasticity that is capital E. So when a body is loaded within its elastic limit, the ratio of stress and strain is constant or stress is directly proportional to strain. This constant of proportionality is known as modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus and it is equal to stress upon strain that is sigma upon E. This we have already seen. Similarly, modulus of rigidity or shear modulus, it is denoted by C, G or N. So it is defined as when a body is loaded within its elastic limit, the ratio of shear stress and shear strain is constant. So you can say that G will be equal to Q upon phi or tau upon phi. So C, G or N, this is the value of, this is, these are the notations for modulus of rigidity and g is equal to suppose we use g as the notation then that will be equal to shear stress divided by shear strain shear stress is denoted by q or tau and shear strain is denoted by phi now relation between the modulus of elasticity and modulus of rigidity is e is equal to 2g 1 plus mu now we'll define the another very very important term that is volumetric strain that is EV. So it is a ratio of change in volume per unit original volume. So it is delta V upon V. Delta V is change in volume and V is the original volume. In general term we can say that it will be equal to as volume is nothing but it is a three dimensional term. It will be change in strain in X plus strain in Y direction plus strain in Z direction. Now we'll try to understand what is the meaning of concept of uniaxial loading. So when the load is applied in one direction, then it is known as the uniaxial loading. So suppose this is x direction, this is y direction, and this is z direction. Then along x direction, we are having force P which is acting and length is also along the x direction. So this is the axial loading that we have shown and it is a pull type of the force the b is along z axis and this t is along y axis now sigma x because there is only one stress that will be along the x axis because force is acting along the x axis so we have called it as sigma x that is force upon area and this cross sectional area on which this p is acting is b into t so it is p upon b into there are no stresses which are acting along y and z direction and therefore sigma y and sigma z both are zero. So there will be strain that is the linear strain because this force is acting along the length L. So this linear strain is equal to sigma x upon E. Now mu is equal to lateral strain divided by linear strain. So we can say that lateral strain will be equal to mu into E. Now if this force is applied along this x direction there will be increase in the length but there will be decrease in the other two dimensions and that decrease in b and t is denoted by this minus sign because lateral strain is always related to the b and t in case of rectangular bar substitute the value of e over here e is nothing but ex so value of ex is sigma x upon e so we can say that e x is equal to sigma x upon e so it is minus mu sigma x upon e that will be the strain in y and z direction which are the, nothing but the 
lateral dimension in this particular case. So we can say that sigma x is p upon bt, ex is sigma x upon e, and ey and ez are minus mu sigma x upon e when there is a uniaxial loading or uni means along one direction. So there is a load which is acting along this particular direction. So this is our linear direction and other two are our lateral dimensions. So B and T are the lateral dimension or we can say that Y and Z are our lateral dimensions. Suppose we take into consideration the biaxial loading. So that is the load which is acting along two directions. One is along X direction, another one is along Y direction. So this is the cross section that we have shown. So total strain in X direction will be equal to Ex will be equal to sigma x upon e minus mu sigma y upon e. Similarly, total strain in y direction will be equal to sigma y upon e minus mu into sigma x upon e. In other words, this Ex is nothing but linear strain plus lateral strain, but lateral strain is having minus sign. So if x is linear, y is lateral. Here, if y is linear, then x is lateral. So therefore, sigma y upon e minus mu sigma x upon e. So when we consider y direction, then x will become lateral and we consider x direction, then y will become lateral. So total strain will be linear strain plus lateral strain, but lateral strain is always having negative sign. So therefore, this minus sign will come into picture. Similarly, if you consider triaxial loading, then if you consider total strain in x direction, then as you can see, this is the linear dimension, y and z are lateral. So here, plus lateral strain in y direction, plus lateral strain in z direction, that will have the minus sign because lateral strain is negative. Similarly, if we consider y as linear, then x and z are lateral. So this is the linear strain and these two terms represent lateral strain. And if we consider strain in z direction, then z will become the linear dimension and x and y are the lateral dimensions. So these are the values of lateral strain. So the linear strain plus lateral strain. Here also linear strain plus lateral strain. Here also linear strain plus lateral strain. So if x is linear, y and z are lateral. If y is linear, then x and z are lateral dimensions. And if z is linear, then x and y direction are the lateral directions or lateral dimensions. So first term will always represent the linear term and remaining two terms will represent lateral terms or lateral strain and lateral strain is negative and therefore the negative sign is there. So this is the concept of triaxial loading and corresponding strain in x, y and z direction.